Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. SHN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of sports yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And what you're about to listen to is part two of Mark Mortier and Dave DiPaolo talking about Super Bowl Thirteen. They reminisce about so many things, but if you did not listen to the first one from last week, I highly recommend you pause, go listen to that one first, and then come back and listen to part two of Super Bowl Thirteen. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. This is part two of my conversation with my friend Dave DePala. So if you didn't yet listen to part one, you'll probably want to listen to that first. We are discussing Super Bowl XIII, a Super Bowl many still consider to be one of the best ever. He said it was the first time... He was said it was the first time he almost hit a referee. Benny Barnes. Of all, <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a horrible call. That Absolutely led, horrible. That led to seven points. Sure did. Right? Because then they the drive, they were able to continue. What you say? That was a 28-yard penalty. That's huge. That's a huge game. 28 yards. And then they were able to continue their drive. And then that's when the Harris, Franco Harris, spoke off that, I guess it was about a 20-yard run for a touchdown. Yeah, that was the play where Charlie Waters ran into the referee. Yeah. He said the referee <laughs> referee stepped right in front of him. And he was Ray, just getting ready to go. Yeah, Ray Penny yeah. gets him after that. But Harris would, yeah. have been, Harris would have been out of the way if that referee wasn't there. Yeah. Seemed like the referee stepped right in front of him. I mean, you know, it doesn't. You don't want to make excuses. You know, you want to just t- kind of tell things the way they are, the qual- the, like the right. way it is. But that was a lot of stuff really went against him in that game. You know, between the yeah the crazy interference call, everything turned around within a period of three or four minutes. That yeah. whole game. Oh yeah. Now, there's no guarantee. I think it was Charlie Waters, right, that the ref stepped in front of. Yes. Now, there's no there's no guarantee that he would have made the tackle, but he certainly w- would have at least had a shot. <laughs> yes. He would have had a shot to, to make the tackle if the referee didn't step. He was just getting ready to go in for the tackle, and the ref stepped in front of him. That's so right. It's just a lot of bad luck, a lot of bad luck. And then... The, so that made it what that made it twenty eight seventeen, and then that was immediately followed by the the kickoff to Randy White with a bum cast on his hand. With a cat, and I still question why was he on the special teams. He always played. Why was he on? The, he always played special teams right away. He's even on the extra point a, team, but not that but game. Why, sure. why, not with a cast. No, not with a cast. And I think it was. I think I was on NFL Films, and I still question this. They made it sound like Jarella did that squib kick on purpose. But if you watch it, he nope. slipped. Exactly. He slipped. Exactly right. He did not do it on purpose. I was just going to yeah. mention that. Funny you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I think I was on NFL Films, they said. It was a brilliant play by the Steelers, a squib kick. To Randy White, because they knew he had the cast. Exactly. But it wasn't that at all. He slipped. It was horse manure. No. He slipped. And just luckily for him, it went went right to Randy White. And he tried to run with it. And he had, 
that that big cast on his arm. He talked about that in the show that I sent you. Yeah, yeah he, he's still he, bothered he, by it. He brought it up. He says, geez, you know, you always bring up the negative stuff. He goes, I always bring up that one about, you know, I uh, got a flashback to my running back days, he said, in high school. He goes, and it popped <laughs> out before he could get control of it. Yeah. And they know that, that was that call, the Steeler radio call. Was, there was a very famous call by those guys. Ball's loose, still loose, still on the ground. Oh, you recovered by Pittsburgh. That was a, you know, that was yeah. a famous radio call um, on uh -huh. the on the radio broadcast there. And then, uh, uh, bam, right down the middle of the field, yeah. one play, right? Yeah, and before you know it, it was 35-17. And that was Tony Dungy. Yes. Tony, Tony Dungy caused the fumble and recovered the fumble. Yeah. And he didn't get to play that, that much because they had so many good players. But he was always on the special teams. Tony Dungy. Yeah, I, I, I it was it was I remember watching it and I remember you know, I don't remember specifically, but you remember how you felt. It was like kind of deflating. Oh you know? yeah. It was kind of deflating, you know, because the game yeah. was so close for so long, and then all of a sudden it's it's yeah. it's not close at all. It's almost like it's a blowout. Yeah. Just like that. It went from 21-17, and a minute later, it's 35-17. In actual time, it was two touchdowns in 11 seconds. Yeah. That's what they said on the broadcast. Two touchdowns two in 11 seconds. Yeah. The play with Franco Both. Harris. The pass yep. to Swan, those two plays. Yeah. Pittsburgh, let me That's... tell you, though, he, he, Bradshaw, like I keep saying it, he never gets enough credit. He made a lot of big plays on third down in his career. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had a big game. That was, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was the first time in his career that he passed for over 300 yards. Yes. He never had over 300 yards. 328. Although, for yeah. some reason, I looked in two box scores, and it only gave him 291 for some reason. I don't understand that. But in another mm. one, I looked at it, it said 328, and they mentioned it in the game that he went over 300 right. yards. Yeah, so, I, re I remember they they mentioned that was the first time in his career so I don't that know he what, went over 300. Yeah, I don't know why they – I don't know why I had in two separate box scores, they had it at 291. I don't get that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why, but it was over 300 yards. And and he got, you know, look, we didn't talk about it, but early in the first quarter, it was after he got, it was, there was a play where he goes to the sidelines and he's actually in so much pain. He's crying. He's got a towel over his head. Oh, I don't yep. know if you remember that. I, I shoulder, actually, shoulder injury. Exactly. Was a shoulder injury. And when he threw that pass to Stallworth, he came off the field. He had his head in the towel, and he was crying again. So he, yeah. when he threw that, he must have re-aggravated it. He must, right. have been, he must have been shot up with so much painkiller or Novocaine, whatever they shoot you with, that, right. he didn't, that he didn't feel it for the rest of the game. But he must have been able to function. And to get through that because – and I think one guy even said something to the camera guy to get him out of there. But he right. was very, very uh, – he was very – he was in a lot of pain. and he, he didn't miss a single play in that game. Got to give him a lot of credit for that. I'm trying to re I'm trying to remember what play it was that he injured that shoulder on. Um – I think Probably it took a big hit. It could have been the one um, where the ball pops loose because when it goes over onto the sidelines with Hegman and Henderson, they're giving him smelling salts after that. Right. They, they're holding it up under his nose. And yeah, that's the first cause... time you see him where he's actually in pain. Yeah. When Henderson, came, right. Henderson think... was on top of him, and when he came down on him, his shoulder went into the ground. Yeah, and he he didn't have a good grip on the ball. No, so it was a fumble. 
No. Nope. Right? He was pick, he was picking up the fumble, so he didn't have a good handle on the ball. And then immediately Henderson was on him. Yeah, I think you're right. That's the play that he hurt his shoulder. Yeah. And the announcers even mentioned, you know, is he going to be able to play? He said about a sprained shoulder. Right. He suffered a sprained shoulder. Speaking of quarterbacks and asking if they announced, did you notice, was it the third or fourth quarter that Danny White was throwing the ball on the sideline? Danny oh. White started warming up. And they brought it up. I remember that. Yeah, Merle yeah. Austin brings it up. And he goes, oh, look who's throwing the ball over there. And I says, geez, so. I, you know, I forgot about that. But when I rewatched it, Danny White was tossing the ball around. Oh, well, maybe Stoback had an injury too then. Yep. I don't, I don't remember. He took I a couple remember. of he took a couple of big hits, Stoback, you know. Oh, yeah. In that game. Yeah. Oh, both of them. Bradshaw and Stoback. All those quarterbacks back then, you know, in the 70s, in the 60s. Those guys were getting hammered. But they came back, Mark, to their credit. They sure did. You know what I mean? Yep. They came back the first uh, – he threw a touchdown to Dupree. Um, yep. They drove downfield. I forgot how long that took. Um, didn't take long. I, I know the, it didn't I know take the second long. one, after the onside kick, that second one was two minutes and one second. But the one right. before that, I can't remember exactly. Was there six minutes left? Six. Uh, hard to remember. Somewhere that around there. About- Sounds about right. I didn't jot it down. I think there was around six minutes left. So they took it. They actually took. So maybe that one did take. A, it yeah. took about four minutes off the clock, or roughly. R- about that. But, I mean. Then they had the onside kick. Then they had the onside kick, and that was a perf boy. You couldn't have planned that kick better. Right. It went right past Dungy. Yeah. I think Tony Dungy again. I think it went right yeah. past him, and Dennis Thurman picked it up on the bounce. Yeah. Right? So then they made it 35 31. 35 was hardly 31. any time. Two minutes and one second, and then there was only 20 something seconds left. Yeah, and they tried another onside kick, which was kind of weak. He kicked it straight yeah. right into the arms of Rocky Blyer. It was a kind of, it wasn't even a good bounce to it or nothing, it, it was like a dribbler. Yeah, and the first the first onside kick was perfect, like you said. And the second one was lousy. It was terrible. Yeah. It was terrible. No, really. It, well, you were like, yeah. what the hell happened to that thing? Yeah, and kicked it right to him. You right know? to Rocky Blyer. Yeah. But, I mean, oh. I looked up the statistics after the after I watched the game, and surprisingly enough, and I never knew this, you know the Bradshaw and Staubach were both 17 for 30? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yep. But Bradshaw had about 100 more yards. Staubach yeah, only had about but... 230 yards passing, give or take a couple yards. Staubach, well, back uh, then, that was pretty good. So, yeah, not too bad. Right? But Bradshaw back had then. 328. So, Largely so, because of uh, Stallworth, right? Well, that one play was what, 70, 72 yards, I think? Might have been even 75, I think. It could have been, yep. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. Take that away. And that's another thing. Hmm. The Cowboys had nine penalties for 89 yards. Pittsburgh had, uh, I forgot they had less. Oh, Pittsburgh had seven for 46 yards. But you take away those you take away those two calls, the Benny Barnes call, twenty-eight yards, yeah, and the uh, and the fifteen-yarder on um, Billy Trail. Yep, that's yeah. forty. That's forty-three yards. Take away that off of the eighty-nine, and right. the Cowboys ended up with less yardage for. They would have had the same amount of penalties, seven each. Right. Those were, you know, you hate to harp on the, but I'm telling you, those were two terrible calls. Both of them were terrible, yeah. And that and they pass, really didn't. No, that pass interference call, Mark, that really set everything in motion. After that yeah. happened, it all went downhill. Yeah. Yeah, I think they lost. Uh, they lost something there after that. 
interference call. They lost something. Yeah, and it just went downhill fast. I don't know. It was a great you know, game, though. I mean, the guys, the, the announcers were saying the greatest game they ever saw, you know, the greatest Super Bowl they ever saw. That's what they were saying, the announcers. You know? Yeah. Well, it sure was exciting. And you, you it was can, an exciting you, game. If you go back, if you go to YouTube and pull up the right. telecast from – Pull up the telecast from the, from the the actual telecast of, of the you know of the whole game. I think it's three hours and something. And, right. And if you go down, and look at the comments. Every comment is talking about how tremendous the uh, the game was and how there's so many Hall of Famers in it. And I, I I've rewatched this game ten times, and I don't think I've watched it more than four, three, four times myself. But, I mean, these people that are watching it and watching it, some of them are younger people. They're saying, oh, my yeah. father my father told me about this game. And every time, right. I've, I've watched this five or six times. It doesn't get any better than this. You know why? It was very, there was a lot of hard hitting, Mark. That oh, game was, yeah. that game was a lot of, a lot of hard hitting in that game. Yeah. Both of, both of those Super Bowls, Super Bowl 10 and 13, tremendous hitting. Yeah. Imagine think, how many penalties in today's in today's game. Imagine how many of those would be called penalties. I think I think this one was an except. I mean, this one was really, you know, this one I think was just a. I mean, the hits were vicious. Some of them. Oh yeah. What are, some great. Def- I met Jackie <laughs> Smith once at the yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah. I, I met him, and I was looking at him, you know, and I'm just thinking you know, he's got to be in his glory. He's going into the Hall of Fame. I mean, it's it's a great weekend for him, and everybody. Yeah, I always have to wonder about what he wonder what he thought. But he's not the guy that really had his, you know, life together. It probably bothered him for a bit, but I don't think the guy, you know, dwelled on it to the point where, you know, x amount of years later he was still thinking about it. It was one play, and you've seen probably interviews with Staubach. He said, I kind of took something off the ball. I, I didn't right. – I could have – you know what I mean? I could have uh, I could have zipped it in a little better. He kind of takes – I don't say takes blame, but he said, you know, it just wasn't his fault only, you know? Right. And that, that guy had such a tremendous career, Jackie Smith. That probably the only ball he ever dropped in his career. Yeah, he was. He really was. He he had retired. He had retired, and Landry, uh, who got hurt, Jay Saldy, I think. Jay Saldy got hurt, so Jay Saldy was out for most of the season, and Landry called Jackie Smith. He said, "I need a backup tight end. Do you want to play?" And Jackie Smith said, "Well, this might be my only chance to ever play in a Super Bowl." So he said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll play." And you know what happened? Turned into a nightmare for him. He got in when Randy White got into the Hall of Fame. I went for that induction, and right. I remember, I remember Randy White saying to him, "You know, Jackie Smith, it was a pleasure playing with you that year." He made he made it a point to bring him up, you know, yeah. which was really nice, you know, and. Uh, what was it, 18 years he played, Mark? Oh, yeah, he played a long time. I think 18 or... He had to be he had to be close to 40 years old in that Super Bowl. Yeah, I think he was at least 39 years old in that Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Was that, his last, some of was his, that his last year, Mark, or no? Yeah, yeah, he retired after that. Well, like I said, he had already... He retired, and the only reason he came back is because Tom Landry asked him to. And he said, you know, all those years with the Cardinals, I never I never had a chance to play in the Super Bowl, so this might be my only chance. And he always had some of his biggest games against the Cowboys. You see that one play on uh, NFL Films where he carried half the Cowboys' defense. Yes. He scored a touchdown. He was knocking everybody over and carried half the team on his back. Yep. He was, he was a, a great, great tight end. Yeah, he was a 
He was a great tight end before the, they became really popular for receiving, right? Yeah. He, even though he was a good receiving tight end, it was before the, the tight end became like a popular, almost That's like a right. hybrid, you know, right. in between the guys were, in, you know. But he was a big guy, Jackie Smith. Oh, he was very big, yeah. Him and uh, John Mackey and uh, Mike Ditka. Yeah. Those were the three the three top guys, three top tight ends. Funny how they picked up Ditka, the Cowboys, late in his career, too. Yeah. And and they and he went and played the Super Bowl, only at least he won, you know? That's right. You know, because he would bring – he right. he brings that up in a lot of interviews, you know, Ditka. Yeah. He says that uh, Tom Landry gave me a chance when I didn't even know if I could still play. He goes, right. he was he was willing to take a chance on me. He goes, and then he gave me a chance to coach. Yeah. He goes, when I didn't even know if I could coach. <laughs> so he, he, you know, Henderson. he, yeah, he brings that up a lot. Uh, Thomas Henderson talked about uh, in that interview too. He talked about Ditka, Super Bowl twelve, right? You remember? Right. He, was, he was said he was on the special teams. And Ditka pulled him aside and said, "Up church." And he said, yeah, what about up, church? Get him. Exactly. Take him out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he got penalized. Yes. And he got penalized. And he said, I looked back at Dick, and he was run. Dick was running away because he didn't want to get in trouble with Landry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to get yelled at by Landry. Yeah he, yeah, he told Henderson. He pulled him aside and said, you need to get up, church. Take him out. <laughs> Well, that's good. Uh, that's that's good way. stuff. To, that's that's the way it was back then. <laughs> no, it was tremendous. But it was great to watch that game again. Um, it was disappointing. You know, you watch it and you go, you know, it's just it's one of those things. That's the way it goes. But um, the comments beneath, if you ever go on there, read those comments because they're really, really, really good. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it was a tremendous game, but uh, disappointing, you know. Yeah, they ended up on the short end of the stick again. And then I thought they were going to have, I thought they were going to play again the following season. It looked like they were going to play again, right? The following season, they got upset in the playoffs by the Rams. Unbelievable. And that was, was Starbucks' that, last game. Yeah, was that the uh, Jack Youngblood game? A broken leg? Yeah, I think it was, yep. He broke his leg in that game, yeah. Was that was that was that a last was that a kind of a closing seconds game of the win for the Rams or no? I'm trying to remember what the final that wasn't, I think was it that was. Billy, I think it was, was that the Billy Waddy game? It might have been. I think it was twenty one nineteen. I think you're right. I think it was the I Billy Waddy that, pass. And there was still, I think there was still uh, a couple minutes left after that. There was still a couple minutes, and that's when Storbeck threw uh, his final pass was to Herb Scott, I think, the offensive lineman. Yeah, that was a very disappointing game. Yeah, because uh, that could have been, if they had beaten the Rams, they would have played the Buccaneers in the title game. Yes. And they would have beat the Buccaneers. Yes, they would have beat the they would have beat the Buccaneers, and you would have had another Pittsburgh and Dallas Super Bowl. Yeah, because Pittsburgh yeah. that was the year Pittsburgh. That was the that was the uh, Mike Renfro game. That's right against another, Houston. N- yeah. Another call that went their way. <laughs> yeah. Right, the replays clearly showed he had both feet in. Yeah, that the was referee that, said no. Nope. That was the big. That's when in, there, that's when talk of instant replay really started. Yeah, you're after, right. After that game, and you know, yeah. you brought it up earlier. That play with um, Benny Barnes, you you talked about incidental contact. I didn't know this. I read about that play. It was saying it was an article. It was called the five worst calls in Dallas sports history. Not Cowboys, but Dallas sports, Mavericks, baseball, right. whatever. That obviously play was in there, 
And they said that that led to the incidental contact rule, that play. I believe it, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, I believe that. That was terrible call. No, it was a different. And then they ended up beating. They ended up beating the Rams. That game was a little closer than people think. That '79 Super Bowl, that Pittsburgh won. Oh, they yeah. didn't. They didn't really pull away to the end. The Rams gave them a good game. And that that Rams team, that was kind of that always kind of struck me. All the great teams that the Rams had, right? And they could never get to the Super Bowl. They always lost to Minnesota or Dallas. They would have like their regular season. They were like twelve and two almost every year. Twelve and two, twelve and two, and then they would always lose to either Minnesota or Dallas. And that year, they finally made it to the Super Bowl. They were nine and seven in the regular season. Unbelievable! I remember yeah, that nine and seven. I remember a kid calling me up. I ended up going to work that night. Um. I ended up going up to the ice cream store. We didn't own it yet. I was just working there. Right. A, fr a friend of mine, actually his brother was really my friend, but he started hanging around the shop. He was a big Ram fan. He called me that night and gave me the business. I think I hung <laughs> up. I think I hung up on him. Might have been the only time I ever hung up on a guy. <laughs> Boy, was I mad after that, that Billy Waddy game. Yeah. That was a tough loss. It really was. Yep. You know, Landry had a lot of tough losses. If you look back at his career. Oh, yeah. The Cowboys had a lot of brutal losses. The ice game, the game yep. before that, the 66 championship game with Bob Hayes. Shouldn't have been in the yep. in, that game there. The Super Bowl right. five was brutal. Yep. You know? A lot of heartbreakers. The, catch was, lot of heartbreakers. the catch was brutal. Yeah. Huh. Right? A lot of heartbreakers, yeah. They lost a lot of heartbreakers. I thought for sure they had that game won. Uh, yes. The one against San Francisco. I thought but they after had the, that game won. After the second Everson Walls uh, pick, pick. Right. Th they were driving down, and I thought for sure they were going to at least get a field goal out of that drive. Yeah. They ended up punting. They threw a, a Danny White was like fading back and he like throwing kind of a little. He lob, he put it out to uh, Doug Donnelly, who kind right. of couldn't couldn't pull it in. And yeah. I, I remember when I watched the game, I remember saying, "What the hell is he throwing it to that guy for?" But yeah. my buddy ran a golf tournament here in Waterbury, and for some reason I don't know why, he, he this is a huge uh, car uh, dealership that he works for, a buddy of mine. And his, yeah. con his contact man for this golf co tournament, you're not going to believe it, was Doug Donnelly. <laughs> so he gets him on the phone, <laughs> and he calls me up with the guy on the other end. Donnelly's on the phone. Yeah. And I says to him, geez, I hate to bring this up, I says to you, but I says it was a kid when it, when it happened. It's still bothering me. I says, if you caught that ball, I said, again, I said we would have definitely, we were almost in field goal range at that point. We would have went right. another ten, and we would have definitely kicked the field goal. He goes, you know, I had a real bad shoulder that year. He goes, and I just couldn't quite haul it in, you know. Yeah. And he goes, and he, he goes, he started laughing. He goes, "What the hell are you bringing that thing up for?" He goes, <laughs> I said, we, "I'm on the phone with you." I said, "The perfect opportunity." <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, he, he was pretty good about it. And then yeah. I, sp I spoke to him one more time after that. I right. didn't bring, I didn't bring it up again. <laughs> I was asking him how he got drafted, you know, what he thought about getting drafted by the Cub. I think he played for Ohio State, Doug Donnelly. Uh huh. I think so. And it was he was kind of right. like there was Golden Richards and then there was him. You right. know, like it was like easy to kind of mix them up. They were you know, both white guys, both playing yep. receiver, and like like one yep. right after the other. I think they both even had the same number. Wasn't Golden right. Richards eighty three? 83, yep. Number so 83. Was, so was Donnelly. Yeah. That game would have been over. There would have been no catch. There would have been no drive like that. Yeah. But, and then there was the Drew Pierce, the uh, Drew Pearson, uh, who was that that uh, corralled him? The, uh, he yep. got him by the back of the back of the jersey. He pulled him down. You're right. 
What was his name? I can't uh, remember. Dwight, I, I, was it Dwight Hicks? No, it was the other one. Yeah. He Dwight Hicks though was in that was in that backfield. It was Ronnie Lott, Dwight Hicks, and there was two other guys. And one of them was he got pulled down by just barely got him. And you yep. know if you, if you look at the next play when Danny White fumbles, right? Go rewatch that. Danny White runs up to the referee, and he's telling him, yeah. "My arm." He's making this with his mouth. My arm is gone. The referee doesn't even pay any mind to it. Completely yeah. blows yeah. him off. So what he's doing is he's bringing up. Now I don't know if that was the tuck rule back then, but Danny White is bringing it up. Yeah, he he grabs the referee, actually touches him, and right. he, he turns him around and he's and he's making this motion. And yeah. what's his name is going crazy, uh, Vince Scully. Right during the whole thing, but if you watch it again, Danny White runs up to him, puts his hand on the guy's shoulder. And, turn, and he says, my arm was going, and the guy just completely brushes him off. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that, yeah. you know. I don't I don't think there was a tuck room back then. Yeah, but he's he's still talking about something, about his arm going forward. He was a yeah. smart guy. He was a smart guy, Danny White. Oh, like, yeah. He, he was a guy that would know about that, you know what I mean? Right. For, for some reason, he's bringing it up to the ref. So uh, that was another disappointing game, Mark. Drew Pearson was uh, off for a touchdown. Well, as as uh, Hank Stram said in the broadcast, if uh, what's his name didn't grab it, would have been the Bye Bye Blues. That's, yeah. Hank, that's the way Hank Stram termed it. I can't remember his name. I'll get the it. Guy that grim. I'll I'll yeah. get it eventually. My buddies are big 49er fans. The guys that come over on Sundays, yeah. but you know, um, yeah, it'll come to me. Yeah, I know Lawrence Pillars. Oh, oh. I know, I know uh, Jim Stuckey. I think hit Danny White, and I think it was Lawrence Pillars who recovered the fumble. Uh huh. Or either the other way around. They were both involved. Either Stuckey hit him in Pillars, or Pillars hit him and Stuckey recovered. One or the other. You know, but um, yeah. they really. I got to be honest with you. That last drive where the 49ers went eighty nine yards, the Cowboys yeah. really. Cowboys really got out coached on that drive. Yeah. Yeah. He was using those short passes. He was and, using and those. They were running the ball, too. They exactly. The they, ball. They, they even ran a reverse on that drive. Yeah. Yeah, there was some really good play calling. They. They had. No, he did. He, some, Bill yeah. Walsh outsmarted him. He really did. Yeah. Well, I think our, uh, I don't know if this thing is, this thing is telling me, uh, I think this thing is telling me my time is up. It's blinking or something? It's doing something, yeah. Okay, I, I'm I seeing an hour and four minutes on my uh, thing, so that, it would be about right oh. if it was an hour, right? I'm surprised we got that much. But it prob probably gives you a little I'm leeway. I'm but glad the, it didn't turn off. <laughs> No, we recapped the thing, and we got everything in yeah. the. I think we wanted to talk about, and you yeah. know. Well, it was a good, uh, good, good memories. Not it, not for cowboy fans, but it was it, it was still uh, an exciting game. It was good to talk about it. I mean, the Cowboys look; yeah. they were great. The Steelers were great. You yeah. know, it's they just you know that that's what ended up happening. You can't win every game. My father used to you. say that to me. Can't win every week, yeah. you know. And I think you mentioned in the last uh, the last podcast we had, you mentioned that the only time there was a good Super Bowl was when it was Dallas and Pittsburgh. Up till that well, point, and Super, Bowl. yeah. Super Bowls continued to get lousy after that. One yeah. other thing, too, I forgot to mention, Mark. I I forgot about this. The prior year when the Cowboys played Denver in the Super Bowl was the first night game ever. Uh -huh. You know, this game went back to 415. This was a 415 start. And there's a chart you can look at. It gives all the Super Bowl times. It went up and down and up and down. It didn't complete it didn't go full time night until 1991. That right. was the first game. That was the first time at 615, 630, and it never went back. But in between Super Bowl 12 
And whatever 91 was, I think it was Super Bowl 26. Uh-huh. So for the next 14 years, it went up and down. Right. Up and down. Sometimes at night, sometimes in the, you know, the earliest one ever uh-huh. was the Cowboys of Miami, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, that game was. 1 o'clock. That was wow. the earliest Super Bowl ever played. Because I looked at that chart the other night. The earliest one ever played. I didn't know that. No, nope, wow. neither, did, neither did I. I didn't um, know that. I remember, though, during the game, Super Bowl six, they were saying that after the game, some crazy golf tournament, like anybody's going to hear about that. But right. I guess they did. But, I mean, they said, you know, following the game, something golf on CBS. And so, yeah. you know, that was like 4.30 or 5 o'clock that was going to come on. Right. But um, I looked at that chart, yeah. and it went up and down like that. And I said, "Geez, I always thought that after Super Bowl twelve, the games were played at night. I was that was way off. I was off by, like I said, fourteen years." Wow, I liked it a lot better when they started the games earlier. Yeah, I do remember. I remember. Uh, I don't remember it being that, or I don't remember it being at one o'clock. But I do remember after that game was over that we had time to celebrate. Me and my brother were celebrating. Right. We had to go to school the next day. But now, to, like today, by the time the, ga- you, by the, time the game's over, you got to go to bed. No, you know, it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I'm, I'm wide awake because I work second shift. Right. Uh, but you're right about that. Right. I mean, it's, I don't know. Most people, uh, <laughs> yeah, I liked it better when they started the games early. It's not exciting, you know, it was like when we were younger. It was exciting. It was a lot. It meant a lot to you, you know? Oh, yeah. Especially after the the year before when they lost to the Colts. Oh, oh. It was dev- that was devastating. They, when, you're, when you're only a little kid. <laughs> did you see yeah. the interview I sent you with Lily? He brings that up. Yeah. And he says, you know, something went on there, he says. Yeah. And, and Randy White asks him, and he goes, oh, you think that was somebody? And he goes, yeah. He goes, that was right in broad view of everybody, he said. Yep. Dave Manders oh, recovered the fumble. The fumble. Yep. And they he, said, no, he got up ball. And, <laughs> he got up with the ball and handed it to the ref. He came I, out of the pile with the ball and handed it to the ref. And they said, Colts ball. And if I'm not mistaken, it would have been 20 to 6 if they scored. That game would have been over. With the extra point, it would have been twenty to six. It was over. Yeah, the, the, Cowboys, the way their defense was playing. Yeah, they weren't gonna. The Colts over. wouldn't have caught them. No way. No, that game was over. That was a very bad, bad loss for the Cowboys. Yeah. That was a. People say, you know, why did he play Craig Morton in that game? And you know, Starback had a kind of not come into his own yet. I, I, I you know. Well, he also expected the running game to to dominate as it had all season. Their running game had dominated all season. And in that game, the Colts, Colts shut down their running game. They did. Dwayne Thomas, Dwayne Thomas only had something like 38 yards rushing. Yeah. And if you look at those two, pl- two playoff games, the game against the Lions, he had well over 100 yards. The game against the 49ers, he had well over 100 yards. And the Colts shut him down. Yeah, they had a pretty good defense, but the yeah, Cowboys yeah. were the Cowboys were much more dynamic on offense. They should have they should have beat the Colts handily. Like Staubach says in interviews, we were a much better team than the Colts. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, that's, well, that's it, it, Mark. Okay, well, <clears throat> we'll figure out what we'll do for the next one. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, everybody. Dan and Andrew from Hello Old Sports here. We wanted to drop in and let you know about our latest episode. That's right. We interviewed the co-authors of Phyllis George, Shattering the Ceiling, a biography of groundbreaking broadcaster Phyllis George. And her life is really sort of a journey through 20th century America, from Miss America pageants to the Kentucky State House to the groundbreaking NFL Today show on CBS, even the Kentucky Colonels, the old ABA. 
we got into all sorts of stories about the Celtics under Red Arback, about the interview with Roger Staubach, about really all sorts of things, a fight between Brent Musburger and Jimmy the Greek. We really enjoyed talking with Lenny Shulman and Paul Volponi, who teamed up to write this book. The book is on sale right now wherever books are sold. You know, within reason, garage sales, probably not. So go ahead and pick up a copy today. And if you want a chance to win the book, you can go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash giveaways and register for a chance to win. Goodbye, old sports.